As Kate miller Highgear gets set for the fight to win Eurovision in Tel Aviv, there's a bigger battle she's fighting, a battle to put an end to bullying. More than a decade ago, Kate wrote a song that's gone on to become an anti-bullying educational resource used in schools. But the thing is, she's never really talked about why. At my regular primary school, I think I was a bit much for a lot of people to take. If I could go back, do it again. I'd be someone you could call friend. Please, please believe that I'm sorry. Kate, it's lovely to meet you. You too. Who are you apologising to there? To James. The whole story is, is in the song. I was young and caught in the crowd. I didn't know then what I know now. Were you the bully or the one being bullied? I was never the bully, but I was definitely bullied. And I also saw other people being bullied and didn't have the courage to, to step in. And then later regretted it. It's amazing how that song has reached so many people. Every time I play a show now, I still get someone that comes and tells me that they were James in school and that perhaps their actual bullies have never apologised to them. But to hear that apology from me in that song somehow helped them to heal. Please, please believe that I'm so... so to any teenagers watching this, you know, it gets better. In the song that won you a spot to represent Australia at Eurovision, Zero Gravity, you talk about it being around you emerging from depression. What were you experiencing at that kind of lowest point? I've gone through periods of anxiety and depression before, but after the birth of my son, my life had been shaken to its foundation, something that a lot of new parents, particularly new mothers, go through. It sort of led me to feel very lost, like I'd lost myself as a person. Do you remember that moment when you sensed in yourself that you were in some way losing your old identity? You're warned, people do tell you, but it's impossible to comprehend what it's actually like until you have a child and, and you feel all of these extremely intense emotions. You know, one minute you're just, your heart is bursting with intense love, the likes of which you've never experienced in the next minute. You're just like, get me the fuck out of here. I can't handle this, you know, for one second longer. And I had this sense that my life, as I'd known it up to that point, had been incinerated. I don't want to sort of paint myself as an expert or, you know, the poster woman for postnatal depression, but along with that come the accompanying feelings of guilt, like you, you, you shouldn't even be thinking these thoughts. You, like motherhood's supposed to be satisfying, it's supposed to fill a hole that you never even knew was there. And, and physically, you know, my body wasn't the same and I was struggling to sing and so all of those things were sort of compounding um, my my sadness. I had to somehow start again, like brick by brick. And have you reconciled those conflicting emotions now? I, I would say I've learned to deal with them uh, it, with more equanimity. And um, and obviously Ernie's a bit older now, so you know, we have he's like three. routines. Yeah, he's nearly three. I think that's something I did struggle with, you know, ha being a slight control freak in my life um, and then to suddenly be confronted with this being. I couldn't control how much he slept, how much he cried, you know, what he ate. And it was just le learning to surrender. Speaking mm. of surrender, do you, do you remember that feeling of kind of pushing through the, the depression? It's more of a gradual thing than it, 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 I had to condense that feeling into a three minute pop song, <laughs> which, you know, erupts into ecstasy at the end. The music that I've always been attracted to that speaks to my soul is, is about a songwriter confronting their own flaws or their own shame. It might seem like an intensely personal story to the writer, but in fact, 
that's what makes people feel less alone is hearing that and identifying with that. Are you happy with the Kate Miller Hyde gear that you see in the mirror every day when you get up at the moment? I feel confident and, and sure of myself um, than ever, for, for sure. You know, there's something about hitting your, your mid-30s. I think as a woman that I do feel like I'm just, uh, yeah, starting to hit my stride. So you're at a good place? Yeah. <laughs> what does that feel like right now, saying that? <laughs> Look, talking about myself has never felt easy. I feel so much more at home singing about my feelings. We could sing the interview if you like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's um, probably got about five yeah, minutes left. Yeah, and just try <laughs> to make it rhyme. To feel like I have something to say and to know how I want to say it is, feels good. Yeah. It's been a pleasure mm. chatting to you. Thanks so you much, too. Kate. Thanks, Patrick. Mwah. Mwah.